Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. This is Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Fans, Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans. Uh, the last time we spoke, obviously last week, shout out to Coach D who was on the show. Amazing guest. Uh, we always love having Coach D on. She always gives great insight on mental health. Um, but one of the questions we brought up was the celebrity boxing match that was going down last week. And we saw the results. There have been mixed results on it. Trip, you and I haven't gotten a chance to speak about it because, again, we recorded before the match. Floyd Mayweather, I think he handled his business. Got paid a lot of money to do it, too. But there's some people who feel like he should have been embarrassed by his performance. What's your take, bro? I don't know who feels that way, but I'm, I'm confused Skip, as to Skip why Bayless. you would feel that way. Skip Bayless said he should be embarrassed. You say, you say his name because you want me to flame Skip Bayless right now. I already I spared him early on in the program because I didn't even get at him about that uh, Chris Paul not being a top uh, 15 point guard. I, I didn't even bring that up. But now that now you done made me say it now. I was trying to I was trying to you know stay away from it. Now I said it now. Yeah, you already bugged out for that one. But okay, how, Mayweather is correct, is 46, 47? Oh, Mayweather 44, right now. 44, 44, 45. 40, okay, it's 44, 45. Logan Paul is 28. 27, uh, I believe. 27, 27. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so he's so he's damn near 20 years older than, than Logan Paul. He came into the fight at 50 pounds lighter than Logan Paul. I'm just confused as to what were you expecting Floyd Mayweather to do in this situation? And about six inches shorter. And about six inches shorter. I, this was just about as mismatched as Aaron Carter and Lamar Odom, as far as just the physical <laughs> physique of the thing. You know what I mean? Um, but... What did you? What were you expecting Mayweather to do? You thought Mayweather, just because he's one of the greatest boxers of all time, you thought he was going to go into a fight with a heavyweight, far be it the level of experience difference, but you thought in a situation he was going to go in there and not Logan Paul out when he hasn't actually knocked out a fighter since. Was Ortiz was probably the last one he knocked out? Was it Ortiz or, or who, who got who he knocked? It was Hatton or Ortiz was the last one. Victor Ortiz. Ortiz was probably the last mm -hmm. knockout, right? Um, and that was pr probably at this point what ten years ago maybe. Uh, probably close to ten years. Close to ten years. Mm -hmm. Everyone and, and even with that one, that wasn't one of like they was squaring up and going at it, and he knocked the out. That was more of, you know, protect yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. You did something foolish and Mayweather capitalized and boop, and you and was on the pavement. But now, since then, he hasn't knocked any of his opponents out. It's all been him winning by decision. Usually, um, you know, unanimous decision, but decision nonetheless. So now you thought he was just going to re revert back to pretty boy Floyd, knock out Logan Paul, who's 50 pounds heavier than him, and did not want to fight Floyd. He got in there after that first round and realized what it was. After that, it was Floyd catching him with a combo and then him throwing his body weight on top of Floyd. That was the entire fight from round two to the end of the fight. It was pop, 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 three-piece combo from Floyd. And then <sighs> Logan Paul is putting extra 50 pounds on top of Floyd Mayweather. So in what world were you expecting Floyd Mayweather to knock Logan Paul out? And he almost did knock him out. They showed the little, the little clip where he was out, but it's just that he fell on top of Floyd and Floyd couldn't get him off of him in time to let him hit the floor. That was it. But he would have at least went down. I'm not going to say he would have knocked him out. He could have possibly gotten back up. But he was asleep on top of Floyd Mayweather. And if you can see Floyd trying to get him off of him so he could drop, but it just it didn't happen because of the way he was on him. His, it was too much weight. You're talking about 50 pounds extra of weight. So what did you want Mayweather to do? I thought he fought a great fight. I thought he controlled the fight. For somebody who's going on 45 years old, uh, doesn't train like he used to, because he said he only, right now he's down like three days a week training, 
Whereas before he was training seven days a week all the time when he was boxing. So he's not training as he was when he was a professional fighter. And on top, you know, he's older. There's, there's almost, like I said, there's almost a 20 year age difference and a 50 pound weight difference. So the fact that he was even catching them and it was affecting him the way it was is a, is, is a, is a benefit. But I didn't think, I didn't look at this fight and say, yo, Floyd, I said, there's always a chance he could knock him out. You know what I mean? But I'm not going in like, oh yeah, Floyd's going to knock this cat out when he hasn't knocked out any of his opponents in damn near 10 years. But he's going to knock out a dude 50 pounds heavier than him just because it's an exhibition fight and he's Floyd and Logan doesn't have that much experience. No, Logan is training though. He's a trained fighter. It's not like he just got in there with somebody who doesn't know boxing and it's just a 50 pound, a guy that's 50 pounds heavier than him. Logan is probably training every day like Floyd used to. So, you know what I mean? Like, this is not somebody who doesn't understand the mechanics of being in the ring now. Is he anywhere near Floyd's level? No, but he is a trained fighter who is 50 pounds heavier than Floyd. So I don't know what you want to skip. Uh, you, you know what they wanted. They wanted, they was hoping Floyd got hurt. They were hoping that Floyd got stunned. Um, and then they, got, I mean, then they had to hate on him because he didn't. Oh, well, listen, it's all hate. Because if you're mad at Floyd Mayweather's performance, you're really mad that Floyd got paid again. That's all it really is, right? Floyd never glamorized this fight or made it seem like I'm going for 51 and 0. It was an exhibition, right? Yeah. Um, just like no different than what we saw from Mike Tyson and Roy Jones, and no different than we've seen from other boxers who, once they're done with their career, take on celebrity boxing as a way to continue to generate income. Floyd saw an opportunity to make millions of dollars against a young man who has a great following on social media and said, F it, let's go. You know, I'll show you that it's different from what you do compared to what I do. So I don't think Floyd should be embarrassed about anything. I think Floyd for his age and, and his ring rust, you know, he hasn't fought in four years. Um, look good. He looks, he still looks sharp, you know, obviously older. So he's not as quick. The punches aren't as sharp, but still very solid, you know, for, for what we expected from Floyd. And ultimately Floyd doesn't have anything to prove to anybody like People want Floyd to continue to circle back and fight whoever they feel could beat Floyd. Like this argument now of, oh, he wouldn't fight Canelo now. Yeah, because he's 44 years old. That's why he wouldn't fight Canelo right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> What's wrong with him? Yeah, you know. What's wrong with people? Oh, he should fight Pacquiao again. Why? Because when he beat him before, y'all didn't want to give him credit for beating him. So now he's supposed to fight him again. And then when he beats him again, what you, what you guys are going to say then, right? So there's that aspect of it. I also love the haters who try to criticize Floyd for being a businessman when they themselves are gonna to try to do the same thing, right? Oscar De La Hoya ripped Floyd Mayweather for fighting Conor McGregor. And that was four years ago, right? This is disgusting. It's a, it's a stain on the, on the sport of boxing. Why is he doing it? All that, all that good stuff, right? But guess who Oscar De La Hoya been calling out lately? He wanna fight Conor McGregor now because he see the bag that's attached to that, right? No different than this. I guarantee you in the next four years, when Manny Pacquiao was, is officially done boxing, because right now he's only boxing for money. And we talked about that on a previous episode as well. Absolutely. Manny Pacquiao will go on this exhibition circuit as well because he has a following and he has enough people who will tune in hoping that they get one last glimpse at a legendary boxer. So it's an exhibition fight. We all love it. It's a nostalgic for all of us who are fans of certain guys. There is nothing wrong with it. Floyd Mayweather did not try to promote this as I'm going 51 and 0 now. He openly said it's an exhibition. Yeah. And he said, so after the fight, it felt good to just get in there with some young guys and mix it up. That's all it is, people. And let's not, let's not act. If, if Floyd should be embarrassed by his performance, then where were you guys when we had to sit through a Mike Tyson, Roy Jones event where Roy Jones looked like he didn't want to fight at all, right? Like we weren't criticizing an exhibition when it was Roy Jones and, and Mike Tyson, but now we want to analyze and critique an exhibition of Floyd Mayweather against Logan Paul. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And ultimately, it's, it's the hate. And as Floyd Mayweather said, look, man, you can say whatever you want. I'm going into the box, Boxing Hall of Fame. I just made a quick $30 million, right? And like I said, my kids can't eat legacy. And oh, by the way, he has a legacy. So let's not pretend like he and, doesn't have legacy. And this won't affect his legacy. It, Even if he not lost, it not wouldn't affect his legacy. Not at all. Because it has no bearing on boxing whatsoever. It's an exhibition match. Key word exhibition he's not gonna have a loss on his boxing record so i have really would have nothing to do with his with his legacy i just want to know how you hate on, on on a dude that just caught a 30 million dollar lick 
<laughs> Again, it's it's I'm laughing straight to the bank, like 50 say. It's yeah, it's it's the hate. It's it's the hate. It's the people who they can't see this man win for whatever reason. Floyd has struck a chord with a large number of people who just don't want to see this man win. It don't matter what he does, it doesn't matter how he presents himself. They don't want to see him win no matter what. And for the people who love, because I know when this clip goes up, there are going to be people, oh, yeah, give him credit, you know, for certain things. He ducked fighters. Who did he duck? He, he fought more world champions than Manny Pacquiao. Who did he duck? Floyd Mayweather got 50 career fights. 26 of them are against world champions. Who did yeah. he duck? Oh, he fought, he fought Canelo Alvarez too early. Really? Floyd was 35. Canelo was 23. I just want to give this example for people. Floyd was 35, Canelo was 23, right? When Oscar De La Hoya beat Julio Cesar, Julio Cesar Chavez and what some people consider his signature win for Oscar De La Hoya, Oscar De La Hoya was 24, Cesar Chavez was 36. It was the same age difference, right? When, when we just saw Teofimo Lopez beat Lomachenko, Teofimo was 23, Loma was 34. We didn't yeah. say he was too young then, right? We we acknowledged the young bull for going in there and like, yo, he was able to beat the vet. We didn't say he was too young. We gave him credit. But because Floyd won, oh, Canelo was too young. Yeah. Right? When won, Floyd would've been, beat, that wouldn't have been a story. Right. When Floyd beat De La Hoya, Floyd didn't make De La Hoya come down in his weight. Floyd went up to 154 to fight him. Yeah. Floyd went up. Floyd was the B side of the fight. Floyd was considered, he wasn't the A side. He was a slight underdog against a legendary fighter. He beat yep. him. But when Pacquiao did it, and Pacquiao beat uh, De La Hoya after Floyd after. did it, and then not only that, he made De La Hoya come down to 147 to the point where De La Hoya said himself, by the sixth round, my body was cramping because I was drained from trying to lose the weight. Yeah. Pacquiao was praised for that. Of course. Yeah, right, we just gotta have something to say about Floyd. Of they don't course, like so and, they don't, they and don't that's like not the lingo. right, and 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 that's not to criticize Manny Pacquiao because, like I've said, Pacquiao is a legendary fighter. I just hate that we sit here and we try to critique everything Floyd does, but we don't critique these other fighters the same way. Floyd has nothing to prove. Yeah, nothing, nothing at all. I tell you, the only the only thing that you should be questioning, and I have to go back. I'm sorry, I got to go back to this. Is why the hell is Aaron Carter? Fighting damn near seven foot, seventy pound weight advantage, Lamar Odom. Uh, I'm I'm confused by that. I had to watch that. I laughed the entire time. Um, I'm sorry, but you know I got to I got to say this. Lamar, oh, he gonna have to get his get himself back in the boxing gym or something. Because the fact that Eric Carter hit him with a ten piece combo is it, just mind boggling to me. Like you gonna take that? Like you outweigh that that kid by seventy pounds? And you're a foot and a half damn man taller than him. That shouldn't even win as far as it did. did. I, I'm sorry. Uh, listen, it's comical, the whole thing. I haven't watched it. I've only seen clips. I know Peter Guns and Cisco are loving hip-hop battle was going on on mm -hmm. there. Uh, Lamar, and Peter Guns won that battle, that fight, too. They, I don't know how they, they – just because he, he had seen, um, uh, Cisco with the low blows, and they took off, like, 80 points for that because they definitely got him. Listen, uh – I saw Lamar Odom was out there sagging in basketball shorts. <laughs> that was Lamar, another thing. Who yeah. sags in a boxing fight? Yeah. Yeah. Lamar, <laughs> Lamar was wilding. Um, but listen, they obviously they did it for money. We know that. So yeah, yeah. kudos to them, man. You know, but I, I will say one celebrity fight that I was truly impressed with was uh Chad Johnson. I, I thought Chad mm -hmm. looked respectable. Now he got knocked down yeah. in the fourth round, but he looked like he had a, a pretty good yeah. understanding of what he was supposed to be doing in the ring. And shout wasn't out to Nate Robinson thing. No, no, definitely. De yeah, he, he was out there actually throwing jabs and looking sharp, letting off some combos. Yeah. You know, he just got caught with a punch. He let his hands down. He got caught. But ultimately, kudos to him for, you know, he went in there against a legitimate fighter. That, even though that guy only had three fights, but that guy was a legitimate fighter. And Chad held his own for four rounds. So kudos to him on that as well. Can we, um, before we get off for, off for the fights, can we uh, give uh, some kudos to the quotes? Uh, Clarissa Shields made her debut in uh, MMA and did her thing. Um, you know, I, I, what, what was going to happen in the fight, I thought would happen. Um, you know, it's, MMA fighters won't be able to stand up with Clarissa Shields for too long. 
because if you if you give her a chance in a stand up, it's over for you. Like this is not it's not even gonna be close. So you're gonna have to start kicking and trying to grapple and get her to the ground. And that's exactly seemed like the strategy her opponent was taking. It was because uh, Carissa Seals was catching her. She caught her a couple of times with a nice two piece, and then it was like, nah, I can't I can't take these no more. So you, you know she was going for the grapple, bring her down, throwing a couple of kicks in. Um, but ultimately, you know, she really impressed me because she was able to get out of a couple of those holes. And then in that last round, you know, when they got to the ground and she just, she, she was able to um, get that little mount and she just started rocking her. It was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is where, where MMA does not need. They didn't need Chris Shell to come over here and smoke none of these, uh, these, these girls just like this. Um, but cause the fight was actually pretty even up until that point. Um, but she was just catching her, and you could tell that she was not ready for Clarissa Shields' hand speed. And I think that's what it's going to be. If she does, when well, she says she will, if she does continue, she's going to have to be mindful of that, that people are going to go after and try to bring her down as opposed to standing up. Nobody's going to stand up with Clarissa Shields for too long. Um, you know, we kind of learned that from um oh my goodness well, uh my okay, why am i drawing the blank right now well, her name ronda ronda uh ronda rousey you know as great as she was like we were talking about her as probably the greatest mma fighter a woman's mma fighter of all time she had a little streak going on she was just running through everything but when she got in front of a boxer and holly hunter someone who had actual hand skills it, and she and she holly thought Hunt. she could Holly Holmes, excuse me. She thought she could stand toe to toe with her, and it did not happen that way. Um, so, and I think you know, especially now coming over, a lot of MMA fighters, if you come over from boxing, they're going to focus on that. They're going to try to get you on the ground. They're not going to try to go hand to hand with you because most nine out of nine out of a hundred times, they're not going to have better hands than you coming in from actually being a professional boxer. So they got to go to their strengths. And it just in this situation, it just didn't work out for her because, you know, Clarissa Chills is actually on her job. Like, she's training. She took this thing very seriously. And, you know, she was able to get out of a couple of grapples, a couple of holes. She was able to hold on uh, once to in, in one of those rounds, but she was kind of in a, in a hole. Her opponent had her um, locked up, but she, you know, she held on until the, the bell ran out and she was able to get out of that. And she came back in and just it was over from there. That last round, she showed the difference with her hand skills, caught a couple of times and went to the ground and we had to stop the fight because <laughs> her hands was, at that point, her hands was too brutal. Yeah, I, I give her a lot of credit because this is a challenge that she really didn't have to take on at this point in her career. Um, so <laughs> I, I commend her for taking on the challenge and saying, look, I'm gonna I'm do something a little different. Uh, she had to train for this for quite some time, like you said, because you know, you already have that understanding that even though my stand-up game is great, when I get in there, I've got to be able to at least slip some of these moves and, and find a way to get out of some of these uh, situations. Um, I, I'm probably, I'm not sure if she should continue on this path, but that's not my call. And obviously she knows what it's looking like financially moving forward, if it's better for her to keep trying to do MMA or to just stick with boxing. Um, and the reason I say that is because the level of talent MMA is going to be better, right? Um, she wasn't fighting in the UFC, she was fighting in another league. But even yeah. the, the competition, the, the the young woman she fought is a brown belt in jujitsu, um, which you know it's a solid belt. It's not you know one of the higher ranking ones, but in terms again of, of skill and competition, you're fighting somebody who's not one of the premier people in that sport, and that's fine because Clarissa was her first time in that in that arena as well in, in the MMA field. So I get trying to get your feet wet, but I, like I said, for me, I would like to see her just stick to boxing, do that unless you want to fully go into MMA. I completely understand. You know, she, she wants to do both. She's saying she wants to do both at the same time. Because even said she was, she said she wants to fight MMA, and she said, "I'm not letting these." I don't want to say mm -hmm. the exact words she said. I'm not just letting them take my belts. Like, nah, you're gonna have to get in that ring if you want one of my one of my belts. You know what I mean? Right. So I I, I love it though, you know. But it's, again, she just needs to be aware though. Like you said, this is you're not you're not even in the UFC right. Right. So it's already different. This is this might be like the CFL compared to the NFL. Right. You know what I mean? Like as far as just competition wise go. So you may be able to get through these uh girls here. And maybe not, because it's you might run into one that's just that much better. Like you you know, you fight there, the best fighter in, in that um in that league, 
who knows how what that what the outcome is. You know, you you pretty much you're fighting someone who doesn't have, let's say, the experience of a Ronda Rousey, but she's just she's an MMA fighter. So you know, things could be a little bit different. So she does need to be cautious. And again, she doesn't need this. Like you, you're the you're you're the only the first ever two division champion at the same exact time. Like you're holding two weight classes, I should say, not the two weight classes. You're holding belts. The only person to ever do this in boxing. So you don't need to do this. And if you take a bad loss in MMA, how is that going to affect your boxing moving forward? Yeah, that that and then, you know, the training principles are different because in an MMA, yeah. you you have to be prepared for other things, right? You got to be prepared for the leg strikes, the takedowns. And so your defense in MMA is completely different than your defense in the sport of boxing. And so I would hate for it to get to the point where now one is affecting the other in either way, right? You, yeah. you don't want to be in an MMA fight with your hands up high as a boxer and then giving away an opportunity for somebody to, to take you down or, or leg sweep you and things like that and vice versa. I wouldn't want you in a boxing ring and now your principles have changed because you've been training so much MMA that now you've been, you keep getting caught with your hands down. And, yeah. you know, listen, she's a great fighter. Don't get me wrong. She is a great fighter. She is obviously the best in, in the sport of boxing in terms of women. She's trying to expand and she's trying to challenge herself more. Does she need it? Only she knows that. You know, only she knows what's what's burning inside of her in terms of what I need and, and I want to push forward with this sport. You know, she may have gotten a taste for it now and say, I want to go all in on this and I really want to train and try to see if I could be the first woman to capture belts in both in the sport of boxing and in the world of MMA. So yeah. it like I said, it's something to keep an eye on. I just think that she needs to also be mindful that there's a big step up. And, and competition in the MMA world from the league she's in now to I, obviously the UFC, if that's her plan. Yeah, and that's why I think, you know, with her, you know, listen, I look at this as the same way I look at Roy Jones when he went up to heavyweight, he beat Ruiz, and I said, you know what? Walk off into the sunset right now after beating Ruiz for that title. You went over to MMA, you beat an MMA fighter in MMA, and you look pretty good. You know what? You good? All right, let's get back to boxing. Now, you don't have nothing to prove to nobody. You show that a boxer can come over to MMA and win an MMA fight. You did that. Great kudos to you. Enough respect for that. You get the ultimate level of respect for doing that. But you know what? Get back to business so you can focus on being the greatest female boxer of all time. Because that was my one thing with Roy Jones. I felt like if Roy Jones stopped fighting after right after he beat Ruiz and moved all the way up to heavyweight and got a belt. Even though, you know, Ruiz wasn't the best heavyweight in the division at the time and he was a little bit older, but you beat him, you won the heavyweight title. If you retire right now, you're going to retire arguably as top three all time. I mean, you know, he just obviously he wanted to keep fighting and then Lawson started piling up. So then that, you know, kind of drops you a little bit lower in the rankings. But had he stopped right there after the Ruiz win, we're talking about Roy Jones, arguably, as top three all time. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a different conversation. Um, but, again, we, we definitely salute her for taking on that challenge, and we're going to be keeping an eye on how the rest of uh, her career plays uh, out. Focus. This is your African King's coming, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Friends, Real Talk. Get real with it, my son.